This month, we're asking four big questions, and the first one is, why is there evil and suffering in the world? That can sometimes remain theoretical or philosophical, like, why is there evil and suffering in the world? And it seems like it's out there, but then at some point, it crashes in here, right? And we go through a crisis, and we go, wow, Lord, why, why in my life? God, what, what, what are you doing? Why me? Why this? Why now? What are the causes? First one there is that we live in a broken world. Jesus tells his followers very clearly in John 16. He says, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. If Jesus said, hey, you, you received me into your life, you're going to have your best life. You've ever. It's going to be amazing. And then you find out, no, I live in a broken world, and I don't have a shield put around me because I happen to have Jesus in my life. I personally think that a, a relationship with Jesus is extremely meaningful, and I don't know how I'd go through life without having him um, walking with me and, and living in me, but it does not shield us from the pressures of life. Jesus tells his followers, in this world, in this life, you're going to have a lot of trials and sorrows. And we would say, you know, he's, he's absolutely right, and it's going to be like that until what day? When I've had my devotions enough days in a row, gone to church enough? No, 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 no. When the day that Jesus takes me home to be with him is when I'm finally going to experience a, a place that has no more mourning or sickness or crying or pain. But until then, he's told us. He says, you're going to have some troubles in this world. Another reason we sometimes suffer is the hurtful actions of other people. Sometimes our pain is because of the actions of other people, right? Sometimes because we live in a broken world. Sometimes the actions of other people. A third possibility is sometimes it's our own actions that have consequences, right? Proverbs chapter 19, it says this, people ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then are angry at the Lord. Have you seen people do that? Driving 80 miles an hour down, you know, and, and then they crash and they're like, I don't know why God allowed that, you know? And he's going, well, it probably should have been following the speed limit, you know? And, and so uh, sometimes it's our own, con the consequences for our own sin. But here's where we have to be super careful. That we not apply this to other people thinking, oh, you know what, if special needs child, probably they did something back, you know, years ago that got us, or he lost his job, probably there's something going on behind it. When we do that, we become just like Job's friends, right? Job is suffering, clearly Job has done something wrong, and, and God does not look kindly on that. We might say if a guy jumped out a window, that might be connected to his head and neck injuries. Uh, but to go beyond and to say this person's suffering, therefore we need to say, I, I just don't know. I don't know. Some of you can look back in your life and you know that the most profound change or most significant change you made in your life came because something was going on for you. You had some kind of emptiness inside, or there was a relationship that went south or something, and it, it caused you to sort of look at your life and to say, am I going the direction that I want to go? And it caused you to shift the trajectory of your life, and you look back and you go, that was a painful impetus for what happened in my life. Sometimes God allows us to go through challenging times because he wants to discipline us. He wants us to Hebrews chapter 12, it says, the Lord disciplines those he hates. No, those he loves as a father, the child he delights in. God sometimes allows us to experience stuff because he wants to, he loves us. He goes, I, I want you to get back on track. I don't, I don't want you to keep going down that path. That's going to be devastating for you. There's an invisible world uh, that there are angels and there, you know, you see the story of Job, the verse right there. But even today, you know, Peter said, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a, a lion seeking someone to devour. Some of you have been in a situation where you go, I felt this extraordinarily pull of this temptation. It seemed like overwhelming. And I think the Bible would say that that's your enemy. He's using every strategy in the book to lure you into a trap, and sometimes that's the cause of our suffering. Finally, our hard times may be used to help others. I have this sense that we're going to get to the end of our lives or maybe even into the afterlife, and we're going to look back, and we're going to be surprised that our greatest impact came from some of the most painful experiences we've had in our lives. People are going to say, you know what? I want you to know you 
Your life was such an inspiration. You go like, how? And they go, when you went through that challenge and the way you like held on and, and you didn't just retaliate or whatever, I was like, I was like, I want what they have. Sometimes what we think is the worst experience in our lives becomes the most powerful impact of our lives. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son. He wants to take every situation in your life and often it's the most painful ones that seem to accelerate the work that he wants to do in, in our lives. And he takes those events and he shapes and molds us like the master sculptor potter. And he begins to make us look more and more like Jesus. That's God's goal for you and for me. That's what we know. That's our confidence. The choice is, will I suffer with Jesus or will I choose to suffer and do life without him? I'm not saying life is all suffering. There's a lot of great things in life. But when I go through the hard times, am I going to go through those alone or am I going to go through those with him?